What is up? It is Andy. I'm here with you on a Monday. We're, what, give or take three or four weeks until the NHL playoff starts. And that's great for a multitude of reasons. Number one, a reason that probably you and your mom and your grandma all know. And that's, I don't know, it's going to be the middle of April and weather starts to get a little bit warmer. And speaking of which, I was just thinking about, I don't understand how... Why is it that when you go out on a fall night, you go out in late September, early October, it's got that nice crisp fall feeling and you got that jacket on, and, but it feels good to go out. How come that doesn't happen again during the spring? Like it's the same temperature. If you took the thermometer, it's the same temperature on the night out, but why does it not feel like fall? One night's gonna be 64 degrees. One night's gonna be 64 degrees. Why does it not feel the same? I'm going to have to call Bill Nye for the answer to that one. But another reason that I'm looking forward to the playoffs and it can't come soon enough is because of the absolute ruckus and the chaotic situation that's going on in this final stretch of the season. It's full Peter Baelish chaos as a ladder. You never know when random teams are showing up deciding to be rats because you'd figure, hey, you have certain teams they have to play for something. They're fighting to get into the wild card. You have teams who are fighting for positionings within the playoffs. It means a whole hell of a lot more to them than the bottom dwellers who should technically be mentally checked out looking for golf. But then again, they're playing with house money. Oh, yeah, does that defenseman want to pinch? Take it easy. Play free. Play easy. Winnipeg, oh, you need points? You're gripping that stick tight. All of a sudden, I don't want to shoot. I'm going to pass. I'm gonna, oh, we just got shut out 3 nothing by the St. Louis Blues. But then again, you see the Vegas Golden. The Knights, they're going to play Columbus. They win 18 to 1. And then you're like, well, that's what it should be like. And then you bet on a team like Pittsburgh against Montreal, who got destroyed the night before. And then they lose at home to Montreal after taking a 2 0 lead. It's chaos out there. And we're just trying not to die. We're just trying to make it to the end of the Jaws movie, even if we got a little bite. Because we have our team that last year we had our horse. We came in here and we said, listen, there's a team, and by we, I mean me, there's a team that's not being valued, there's a team that's being disrespected, and that team's gonna make us money. And we've done that once again this year. You know who the team is. We're gonna be talking about them in a few minutes, okay? But before we talk about that, many of you in Canada. I'm the mount. You know, somebody DM'd me from Vancouver and he was telling me how he comes to me like for, for NHL bets, and I was just thinking, that's that's got to be wild like that some guy from Vancouver or somebody in, in up there in Alberta imagine someone from northern Alberta and it's true I, I've, I've seen the tickets you guys send me those bet 365 tickets you come to me for gambling but how does it feel you skated to your friend's house growing up it was two degrees the, the streets were frozen you, you laced up your skates and you skated to your friend's house but you turn to a cannoli-eating Mediterranean guy from the outskirts of New York to tell you who to take in hockey. And it's not a say you're doing the right thing. I do know more than you, despite the fact that you grew up living and breathing this stuff. That'd be like me needing to get advice from a guy in Belgium how to like wolf down McDonald's. It, it just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen because Here's how I know. One time I was in a class, I was in an acting class in summer, and we had foreigners, and they watched me like eat a sandwich in New York. There was a girl from the UK. The level of appalled she was when she saw me eat a chicken parm hero with my bare hands. The disgust I felt. Nothing but disgust. And I just continued to eat it like the slob that I am. However, I'm happy to help you up there in Calgary, happy to help you in Edmonton, or I'm happy to help you in those, those random messages I get from people who haven't watched a day in their life, but they managed to find a guy who helps them win. That's what I'm going to continue to do for you. That's what I hope to do for you. We'll try to continue that today. We're just trying to survive. We're trying to make it to the playoffs where we were able to thrive last year because we found our horse last year, and now you know who our horse is this year. And in case you need to be reminded, I'm about to give you a bet with them in about five seconds because you people up there in Canada, the Alberta folk who need to call on me for help, the big nose Mediterranean guy, here's what I know. You sent me a lot of your bet 365 tickets. You've been saying, Andy, you've been having those Caesar player point with the win in total. We have that up here. We got bet 365. I said, all right, let me give him a call. We got a bet 365 promotion for all you Canadians and for whatever, which one of you Americans where bet 365 is legal. Where is it legal? Check the uh, description in this video it will tell you because they got a promotion you bet one dollar you want to know how much they're going to give you free 
not 364, not 366, 367, no, 365. Bet $1, get $365 in free bet credits. Fantastic promotion, got to be a new user. And like I just said, make sure you read the specifics in the description of this video. They'll, they'll tell you all the details and then also provide the link that will take you directly there. And if you got a problem, you know where to go, 1-800-GAMBLE. You don't have to tell me, but call them. Somebody will be there to help you out. So you know who my guys are. You know who they are. The same team I've been telling you, they were out of a playoff spot when I told you about them, and now they're just steamrolling their way to the top, just like we kind of thought they were. They're on another five-game winning streak, and I only regret telling you not to take them against the Leafs outright. Like We took them at a plus two and a half just because I was scared, and how did they play without Lekkanen? Just like we thought they would, playing by committee. The defense is the extra forward. That that core of defense when they got there, supplement the offense. It's a beautiful thing to see. And we're going to use those defensemen to make sure we can get the Avalanche at a good price. I'm taking the Avalanche. I don't care that they're playing, oh, but Chicago, they've won me so much money as an underdog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so did Montreal. Montreal was winning uh, all these games as an underdog until Colorado got in there and scored eight goals on them. I don't give a rat's ass about your little favorite team, your little underdog team that's been making money for you because your underdog team is about to run into my 2023 team. And that's the Colorado Avalanche who have won five in a row and are finding the right stride. And remember, they'll be adding Landis Scott. They'll be adding Lekkanen. They'll be adding Johnson and they'll be adding Manson to the team that's already been rolling. However, for this game, we're going to take one of those defensemen that I believe are the secret extra weapon that they have. McCarr's probably not going to be available to take because they might set his at one and a half for this game. But if they do, obviously add McCarr. But you can also add Taves, Gerard, or Byron. Any one of those. Or if you need a forward, give me some JT Comfort who plays on the top power play unit. But I'll take any one of those guys with an avalanche win. I don't care about you and your Chicago Blackhawks. Go ahead. Go ahead. You see that big plus money next to the Blackhawks? Go ahead. Click it. It's going to make you feel good when you see that payout until when it's over and me and the rest of the Avalanche train are laughing at you. Take it easy. Have a good day. Let's go to the next bet. How about those Sharks? Are the Sharks uh, Just tell me. Are they going to rat us? I, I'm, I'm just bet against one. I know Chicago, you've been telling me they're one of your favorite rats. Montreal's one of your... Is, is, are the Sharks one of your favorite rats? And I want them for my favorite rats. And Edmonton, I told you earlier this year, I don't trust them. They put a string of good wins together, both at home, on the road. Dare I say they've found a little consistency, at least offensively, where they're scoring enough, where they're not blowing. I mean, I still think they are capable of blowing leads when it matters most against good teams when the time comes down the road in the playoffs. But against these lesser tier teams, against the Sharks, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the bet, both teams to score, Edmonton to win in 60 minutes. That makes this line somewhat manageable. That's what I'm going to take for this one. I'm going to hope that they continue to do what they've been doing and the Sharks don't decide to come out on the road and beat the Oilers. Oilers. The only way the Oilers lose this is if they beat themselves. Let's see if it happens. Because when your last game is against the New York Islanders and you get steamrolled, that's not a good indication of where you're at right now. So I will take the Edmonton Oilers. Both teams to score in 60. But, you know, any sort of combinations that you want to take with the Oilers... If you think that they'll concede two, then one way you can bring that down is both teams to score two and take the Oilers. Speaking of those both teams to score two, there's a game I have no clue what's going to happen in because it's the Florida Panthers, a team you can't really trust. They've had a couple wins at home. They can lose any game. You've seen this from Florida. They can lose any game at any time. Detroit tends to play a little bit better at home. I like both teams to score two plus in this one. And I'm going to combine that with a game that you probably wouldn't think both teams to score two plus, but I'm going to do that with the Calgary Flames. The Calgary Flames have weirdly been engaging in high scoring content. They found their offensive stride very late in the season. It's so weird to see. It was 5-5 against Dallas, high scoring game against Vegas. So they've been scoring goals. And they also have either been winning or not getting blown out. Their losses have tended to all the, all their losses have been one goal or wins 
So I'm inclined to take Calgary plus one and a half in this one. I know some of you, for whatever reasons, maybe you still call a guy to put in your bets and he'll only take things like money lines, puck lines. If you want to take a plus one and a half and combine it with something else, I'm too scared to take Calgary to outright win, but they've been getting in these really close games. Obviously, they can't afford to even lose a single point, so they're really laying it all out there on the line to try to make the playoffs. I like them at plus one and a half in this one. And if you want to guess what's going to happen in Pittsburgh and Ottawa, two teams who lose every single game when they needed to win every single game, go ahead. Be my guest. Go ahead. Bet on Pittsburgh, who took a 2-0 lead at home against Montreal, who conceded eight goals the night before, but then ended up losing that game and then lost to the Rangers twice in a row. And also Ottawa, who's lost four in a row when they needed to win four in a row to make the playoffs. Two teams who are just losing every single game. You want to tell me what's going to happen there? Go ahead. Both teams have scored two plus. But that's what I got for you here on this Monday. That's a lot of stuff for a Monday with only a few games, especially with that, you know, monsoon looming on Tuesday, which is a full NHL slate. But I will see you then. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. You better make sure you're subscribed to this Odd Shopper channel here. Go over to my Instagram. Follow me there. It's at Andy Francis. And then you can follow the Sniff Central chat thread where I talk about what I'm doing. I post some late tickets. Lately, I've been talking about the trickle-down effect where guys like Hagel and Rasmus Sundin and Evan Rodriguez are good plays because you get good prices on them because they're discounted. They play with superstars. Whole bunch of learning for you Canadians up there deep in Alberta rooting for those Calgary hitmen, and you're going in Bret Hart's, Stu Hart's dungeon to kill time on the weekends. Anyway, I'm done talking. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.